Hello, it's Nathan from Access, and I'm here to talk to you about Destiny, and also show you headshots like this. The recent Destiny Alpha featured only a sliver of the final game, but revealed loads about how the game works, There's a wizard here. how the multiplayer is structured, Gains the lead. and how it plays. Using E3-powered jet lag, I played the game for hours, and here are some of the interesting things I found. Alright, ready if you are. The first thing was getting a handle on how Destiny works structurally, moving from campaign to co-op to competitive multiplayer. The Alpha featured three main areas. The Tower, a city area for trading and mission gathering that operates a lot like MMO towns and strongholds. Earth, and specifically Old Russia, which features a mix of exploration, story missions and strikes. And the Crucible, which is the competitive multiplayer area of Destiny. You move between these areas and presumably other locations in the solar system by heading into orbit and flying about in this spaceship. It's effectively a very pretty loading and lobby screen. If you're in a fire team, which is a cross mode party, the members of your fire team come into orbit with you. There was actually quite a lot of the world to explore in the Alpha, mostly big open areas filled with rusty relics of human civilization and clusters of enemies. But there were also caves, looming warehouses and underground bunkers where you'll meet high level enemies you have to run away from. It feels spacious, it's great to look at and I love the sound effect they've used for the Sparrow, which is somehow very Star Wars. There are mission pickups and you can spot other players drifting through the world, but a more challenging way to play with others is to do a strike. These are basically like instance dungeon runs for up to three people. We had a fire team of two and then the game slotted in a third player to join us. It's tough, even at level eight this level six strike was hard going. They throw waves of enemies and bosses at you, but on the other hand, they also give you a higher than average load of glimmer, loot and XP. What I spent most of my time doing though was playing competitive multiplayer in the Crucible. You can switch right over from any other mode that you're playing using your spaceship and keep your fire team intact. The Alpha featured one game type and two maps. The game mode was Control, which is a mix of deathmatch and kind of a territory game like King of the Hill, where control of three zones increases the points that you receive for each kill. The maps were Rusted Lands, a crunched up block of bricks and platforms made for close encounters, and First Light, a dusty moon base that's bigger, more open and allows the use of vehicles, which tended to result in everyone jumping into their sparrows as soon as the round starts. There are a few overlapping things to cover about the way Destiny works here. Your character is persistent, so the same guy, gal or robot you wander through the campaign with hops straight into multiplayer. This character is one of three classes, Warlock, Hunter or Titan. The base abilities are similar, especially in the Alpha which capped everybody's level at 8, although they do seem to get more different the higher level you go. They all have a grenade, a melee attack, a primary, special and heavy weapon and a supercharged attack. I spent most of my time as a warlock, which meant I had this force push style melee attack, this hurled nova bomb supercharge attack, and the ability to glide out of double jumps. This last point is quite an important one. Every class can double jump in Destiny, which together with the ability to sprint puts an added emphasis on maneuverability and skill of movement. Fleet footedly leaping onto ledges and across roofs is crucial. It doesn't go as far as Titanfall, but it does similarly expand upon the regular gravity pinned feel of most shooters. Destiny is more vertical than you think it is. And the Warlock, at least at the low levels the Alpha showed off, is the most vertical of all. The glide takes a little while to master. Your momentum and angle going into the double jump determines the trajectory of the glide, and if you're not careful, you'll hang in the air like a very shootable balloon. I played the other classes too. The Hunter Supercharge ability is this flaming golden pistol, which scores one hit kills and can take down vehicles, and the Titan has this ground pounding melee attack. If you're wondering what it looks like to be on the receiving end of that, it's like this. I also enjoy the Titan's no messing standard melee, and the Hunter's knife throw, which is tricky but powerful. One thing that doesn't become clear until you've played quite a lot of the game is how the weapons work or more specifically, how the game keeps multiplayer balanced when you're using characters you've already leveled up and kitted out. It's a little hard to tell from the alpha, but there does seem to be matchmaking going on. When you're in the spaceship lobby screen, a little thing in the top left corner says evaluating guardians. More than that though, each character has three types of weapon, 
primary, special and heavy. Primary weapons are pulse, scout and auto rifles as well as pistols. They can be leveled and you can find better ones but they're all in the same default category. This is your go to gun, the one you start every multiplayer match with ammunition for. Special and heavy weapons are more powerful tiers. Specials include shotguns and snipers, which in the right hands are fatal with just one shot. It's important to mention that these are my hands. You start with a little bit of ammo for these guns, but mostly the ammo is found around the level in these green crates. And then heavy weapons are more powerful again, they're rockets and heavy machine guns. These will mess you up, but the only way to load them in multiplayer is to wait for a drop of ammo, which happens two or three times in a round. Heavy ammo inbound. And then fight the opposition for that ammo. It's halfway between the completely level playing field of Bungie's earlier Halo 3 and the XP unlocked advantages of something like Call of Duty. You can buy, find or unlock more powerful guns, but you'll have to fight for ammo to actually use them. It'll be interesting to see how this system holds together as players level up and different weapons, armor and abilities are unlocked. For now, it never felt like I was at a big disadvantage during the alpha because someone worse than me had better stuff than I did. Other things worth mentioning, the vehicles shown off so far include the Pike, which is a bit like your standard Sparrow but with guns, and the Meteor rocket firing interceptor. With the right support, the interceptor can dominate the map, although it's susceptible to the mounted turrets, which overlook each of the control zones. And then there's the radar. Anyone who played a lot of Bungie's Halo games will remember they featured a very intuitive red dot radar system which, when combined with a decent knowledge of the map, allowed good players to read opposition movement and intentions very accurately. That's changed in Destiny, now there's a proximity dial system which shows you the direction and range of enemies as they get closer to you. Once you get used to it, you can second guess and track the opposition. I'm pretty sure that kneeling makes you invisible to other people's radar. Either that or I did a lot of moving around slowly for no reason. And it's also fun when you're waiting for an attack and your radar suddenly lights up like this. It feels a bit like aliens. And it usually means it's game over. Before we go, a lot of people have been asking about the tower and the Alpha gave us our first good look. As Bungie promised, this city area is presented in third person, the idea being to make it a more social space for showing off loot, looking at and talking to other players and, inevitably, dancing. Mostly it's designed as a hub of levelling and activities, and as well as other players it's full of trainers and merchants. The first thing you're encouraged to do is find your class specific vanguard. Mine is this lovely warlock lady. These characters offer class specific equipment, and if the word tutor in the description is anything to go by, they might also teach you skills and abilities later on. Nearby are two characters who reward you with specific gear for playing multiplayer in the Crucible. In exchange for Crucible marks earned in competitive games, the Crucible Quartermaster will sell you legendary level vehicles, while the Crucible Handler offers legendary armour. What can we do for you, Warlock? Back outside, this android is the Bounty Tracker. Here you can pick up persistent side quests for both the Crucible and the Wilderness. Stuff like defeat 25 hunters or complete a strike without dying. XP plus Crucible reputation or Vanguard honor are your rewards. Another useful NPC is the Cryptarch. He's interested in old stuff and can be your ticket to high level gear. He's capable of selling you and decoding items called engrams, which you'll also find dropped as loot. Once deciphered, these become weapons or armour, often rare or legendary, and in the alpha at least, they were the only way to get heavy weapons. Oh, I pity your enemies. Other places to buy stuff include the gunsmith and shipwright, who both sell you what you'd expect. And lastly, it's worth mentioning the Postmaster, where you can send messages and items to other players. And the Vault, where you can stash items and, in a useful twist, pick them up with your other characters to save on finding awesome gear for each one individually. And that's pretty much our first glimpse at Destiny. I'm looking forward to seeing how the world operates when it's full of other players, to finding out just how big the game is, and to exploring what looked like another five multiplayer modes in the Crucible. Hopefully we'll get to see at least some of that stuff in the beta, which comes to PlayStation 4 on July 17th. If you've got any questions I've not answered, do put them in the comments below, and don't forget to subscribe to Access for more videos like this one.